real. Another thing that uh, a lot of people do not know when it comes to the ultimate goal of buying a house is there are some aspects of, of your retirement accounts that you can use. Majority of your 401k companies, um, even your 457 plans, allow you to take a part of those funds that you have put aside in your 401k. You can use majority, sometimes up to half of the uh, money in that account towards the purchase of your first home. So if funds is something that's holding you back, uh, I don't have enough money um, for closing costs and down payment and things like that, using a portion or a 401k is an option for you uh, majority of the time. You know, you definitely need to talk with uh, whoever your your service provider is for your 401k, but that's definitely a, a way to jumpstart um, the house buying process for yourself. Um, and the, the good thing about it is most of them, um, and again, you want to check with you, whoever your service provider is, most of them will allow you to take that money out with no penalties whatsoever. No tax uh, consequences um, or any penalties from the service provider at all. Now, some of them allow you to take it out and you don't have to pay the back or some of them allow you to take it out as a no loan or a very small interest loan over the life of your mortgage, 10, 15, sometimes 30 years. And as long as it's paid back, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, but again, you're able to take, you know, those funds out. That's what, that was the way I was able to get my first home was I was able to take a sizable amount of my 401k out and apply that towards, um, the down payment and the closing costs uh, for our first home and allow us to kind of jumpstart that process for us as well. Um, <clears throat> so again, um, you know, if, if it's funds that are are keeping you back from, from, you know, making that leap or making that uh, making that step towards home ownership, that's a second way you can do it besides just saving. Um, Another thing that you can do, uh, which needs to be done correctly, but you can also receive funds or gift funds, if you will, from friends or family, but it does need to be somebody that is in, I would say, direct connection to you, okay? So it just can't be your homeboy giving you, you know, a couple of thousand dollars to help you get it right. Need somebody that, um, I would generally say need to be somebody within the within the family. Generally, somebody within, I would say, one to two levels from you. You know, when I say one to two levels, father, brother, uncle, um, maybe a first cousin, that type of thing. Um, now, for somebody that's not in the family, maybe a business owner uh, or business partner, somebody that has a vested interest in your finances, right? So uh, those people can also help with um, giving funds towards though that those uh uh those down payment um uh, requirements right okay now as far as things that you can do again saving for yourself uh to looking at some of your uh retirement options that may allow you to pull money out early or three um looking at finances from helping from family members or, or maybe a business partner. Lastly, um, there are some state and even some corporate um, down payment assistance programs. And but the uh, down payment assistance that's specifically for um, the, the state of Texas, there are a couple of programs out there that I've used, uh, not only for myself, uh, but for other clients, uh, but there's also some corporate um, down payment assistance programs out there that people may not be aware of that they, you are able to get into a house with sometimes with no down payment or little down payment whatsoever. Um, and those things are uh, the, the biggest ones that are most used, which is T Shack, um, Seth, the five, Seth five-star program and the gold star program and, and all those have um, different 
requirements, um, most of them require you to have at least a 620 credit score. Um, again, you know, when we talked about credit in the past, you don't need a 620 to get a loan. Okay, the only, the, the lowest score that you can probably really have is about a 580 to get started and getting towards, you know, getting approved for a loan. Um, however, but if you want to dive into or at least take advantage of any of the down payment assistance programs that the state of Texas have and most lenders, the minimum is about a 620. Some of them even go up to a 640. Okay. However, these, these are funds that coming from the state um, as much as 6%. So think about that. <clears throat> On a $200,000 home, you can get up to $12,000 from some of these programs um, as long as you meet their minimum standards. And again, a lot of them are, uh, there's not a major things that you have to hit. Most of them will require you to do some type of home buyer education. That's usually some type of hour class or uh, online um, uh, certification that you do. Mostly you say generally about an hour or so. And then again, minimum credit scores. Uh, about 620 or, or greater is usually what will get you in the door. Um, some of them do have some um, income requirements or income restrictions where you can't make over a certain amount, but we'll go more in depth in those later in a later episode. Um, and then you have some some corporate um, uh, down payment assistance programs. Um, Bank of America has a great one. Uh, just recently, Wells Fargo put out one. Um, B B V A Compass, BB&T. I mean, these are some programs with your local banks that are giving out some. Um, even uh, uh, Navy Credit, Federal Credit Union has a really good one. A lot of these will do either some type of 100% financing, meaning you do not have any type of down payment requirement, which eliminates that out of the closing cost. And then you don't have a closing cost uh, requirement, which is generally... 3% of the loan. Again, closing costs will go into depth more on that. But those are the things that actually, what's the cost of actually getting the loan for the house? What you got to pay the banks, what you got to pay the title companies, what you have to pay in taxes, um, your prepaid insurance, those type of things go into your closing costs, right? So those can be covered uh, with some other things as well. Um, Hey, just want to thank you guys for tuning in this week's episode of Finance Fridays. If you like the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, this is Stephen Thomas with Refine Realty, where the advice is free, but the knowledge is priceless. See y'all next week.